science. Um, my name is Serena, and I take care of partnerships with sentiment. Um, actually, it's really good to be here today in particular. I had a consensus week. Um, at Sim and, and I, myself, we flew in from Hong Kong, so we were very fortunate to dodge the typhoon this week. A quick housekeeping note, this presentation will be recorded um, to keep that in mind particularly during question and answer session. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce Maxim Balashevich, founder and CEO of Santiment.net. Um, Santiment seeks to provide transparency and data-driven analysis for the digital asset market and Maxim is a distinguished sentiment analysis and crowd psychology expert. Um, Maxim has more than 15 years of experience building and leading international teams and more than 10 years of experience um, in financial market analysis. So please join me in welcoming Maxim. Thank you, Sam. Nice to be in Hong Kong. And it's. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's <everywhere. laughs> So I'm from Typhoon, yeah, but still stuck so strongly. Yeah. We had to move, the, yeah. We had to fly earlier than planned, and uh, then we saw the news as well. It's quite amazing for us uh, when they came. Uh, well, we're based uh, the biggest part of the team based in Europe. We don't know what Typhoon is. It's quite amazing. And um, <coughs> to really say it, uh, properly my background, but what. There is one big part, and it's connected to uh, like science and its vision. I've been doing like for more than ten years, actually, something completely different. It's more like uh, yoga and teacher, teaching yoga and meditation. And when I left it, uh, this field and I entered it uh, again. And before I was doing like IT for a long time, being like software developer by IBM, uh, IBM, IBM in Germany. Now when I came back, uh, many things changed. Namely, we had this cryptocurrencies, and it was a very new concept. Together with all the way how we change software development is lean, agile, and interact with each other, and we build the stuff much faster. It was uh, very hard uh, and fast learning skill. And I entered cryptocurrency in 2016, but ever since it's a very interesting observation. Once you are in crypto, like, there is no way back. It's interesting, but <laughs> you pass the door and it's locked to you. But it's not really locked, you can come back, but there is no interesting things like behind. The life in, in, in crypto is very intensive, it's very challenging, and it's changing like, all the time very fast. Uh, but it's uh, very interesting, and uh, you're like, discovering uh, to some degree how we as a human can communicate with each other because the transaction value can be done directly, how we can start build uh, value together because we can see the results very fast, and we can, uh, if we are smart, even if we are like, cooperating, build value very fast together, we profit of it, and we learn very nice people. Are. So, crypto is a different world. And well, but we are not focusing on like on the social, ethical, and philosophical aspects. We are doing very uh, pragmatic uh, uh, financial um, analysis, or like looking how can we value the things are connected. Though. Yeah, the things are connected. Crypto is very fast moving, and to a big degree unknown area yet. Now, when we compare, and many now in crypto they do compare chart of dot com to cryptocurrency space. There is no relation. Whenever you see and people say, yeah, we've reached in, uh, in the dot com, I think like four billions was valuation. So this is our goal for crypto. There is no relation. It could be one billion, it could be hundred billion. Crypto is different, uh, very different uh, animal. If you just look at uh, here is uh, dot com on the left and on the right like uh, with a big spike and that's that and then S you see they are related. They are like very, very strongly correlated assets. It just uh, NASDAQ or dot com was much more volatile and more risk and more profit. Relation is here. Now, when we see, or when we check the chart of uh, Ethereum, this one who is moving from, I don't know, 25 cents up to 1,000 and compare it to stocks, so there is no relation. But crypto moving its own cycles and uh, stock market established financial system moves in own cycles. Sometimes they intersect, like right? we see if there is a uh, general flow for security or for cash. We will see some relations. But basically speaking, crypto are moving its own cycle. It's much faster and much more intensive, and it's not related to, uh, to establish uh, financial assets because cryptocurrencies are different 
by their nature, they're not securities, or they're not stocks, they're not purely owning something without doing something, they're digital commodities. Yeah? We're creating something together. All of established, or let's say proper, uh, cryptocurrencies are actually digital commodities. For Bitcoin, we even say mining Bitcoin. But all others is also like creating or mining, building something together where all of those who participate in the process they own some part of it, they have ownership. So crypto is uh, commodities or digital commodities. But now here comes in the second aspect why it's so different. We do have commodities, we do have physical commodities, we exist, or we have data for more than 200 years. Now this is the data for digital, for physical commodities. Yeah. And now for digital commodities, we have only for six years. And only last year, it was very intensive. A lot of data was generated, thousands of tokens, and a lot of uh, communication and uh, attempts of creation. Only six years here, almost three, 300 uh, years here, is very nicely established uh, segments how it was developed. Yeah, like gold standards, the time before gold standards, the time after gold standards. We learned a lot for physical commodities. For crypto, we're just learning it now. Yeah. Maybe in a few years we'll uh, define, okay, that was an age of golden age of Bitcoin as a godfather and then scam coins and whatever. We define the stages later. Now we're just in a very intensive process of learning how can we value it. Yeah. It's a very new field and we're all in the learning process. We're just in like six years in the first class and first grade. Many teams and many found analysts and traders, they try to learn, apply the existing skills, but because it's very different animal list, we fail over and over again, it behaves differently. And valuation of cryptocurrency or digital as uh, digital commerces, it's a big challenge for everyone. I haven't I don't know anyone who says it's easy. Can make calls all of Norway. There is none. It's very challenging. It's a big challenge. What we know now, as uh, where the market says, or how we position sentiment as a platform, we know that you definitely need to pay attention to crowd psychology, crowd sentiment. If you don't do it, it will be super hard to say when the whole market or specific asset is overvalued or undervalued. Only by observing or measuring crowd sentiment you can have some degree of assurance it might be already to under. And we definitely need to do as we did before fundamental analysis. So there is no doubt about it. Because if you don't do it, you don't know what is the underlying intrinsic value, what is the real value behind this uh, digital commodity. Both have to be done all the time. Regardless of uh, intrinsic value of the asset, can be valued by crowd in both directions, all valued or undervalued. But right now in the crypto market we have dozens of projects who are undervalued. It's a typical, it's a normal behavior for the market. As we build building the platform and like categorize instructions the data, uh, to make these two parts of analysis, crowd sentiment and fundamental, we believe the four following uh, data buckets are needed. One is on-chain data, completely new, didn't exist before, now tap to it, transactions, uh, wallet, the holdings, accumulation, distributions, taken directly from the blockchains, social related data, how communities are developers or communities around token, what is the mood, is it growing or falling, fundamental, some unique variations, what is developer activities taken from GitHub, for instance, and of course, as before, like price, volume, uh, what is the data, what is the liquidity of the market. This data is also important. So these four are kind of split it, but we need to combine it and see uh, with the same glasses in order to get the total overview of the market. Now, just to give you examples why the first part, which is unique, and we did not know how unique and important this crowd sentiment analysis. 
how it does reflect the state of the market. Um, this is a simple chart where you see the price of the, I think it was even uh, Bitcoin, how it was uh, traded in Korea. Uh, I don't know if you heard or not, there was a so-called kimchi premium. Are you aware of kimchi premium? Yeah. <laughs> so they paid basically 10, 20, 30 percent more for digital uh, assets or commodities than the rest of the world. Yeah, there were reasons why it, was, uh, it could work, but it shows the desire or we put it short, the greed or expectation of further growth was so strong they were ready to pay this premium, huge premium. And in the peak of the market, it was, uh, you see, 8th of January, approximately the peak of the last uh, bull market, they were ready to pay 50% more. It's a really like extreme. So the majority of the market, the crowd sentiment is so sure that it can only go up, they're paying 50% more right now. And it's exactly where the crash came, 50%, and it never came back. It was since it was falling. Did we have this matrix before? in the crisis of energy matrix. No. Did you know at this time? Well, we did, well, we did write something in our, so in our communication channels, but it was so new that it was very hard to say this is a real signal or real indicator to say when the top. Now we know there is specifically for crypto unique way how you can measure these tops, you know, overstimed expectations. Now there is another the current state. Uh, if you follow crypto tightly, you know CNBC. Yeah. Ever since I don't know, maybe not so long time ago, three months, since three months, CNBC basically became representative of uh, crowd. Whatever CNBC says is basically what the majority of market want to hear. <coughs> and for some time it was only one of the best indicators to trade against it. Like whenever there was a strong I and mean, in strong sayings, uh, we, we believe uh, this is a recovery, we will keep rising. And what market did? On the next day, it just dropped. Or when they say, no, it's a terrible day, we'll have more of it. The next day, it grows. And it shows it's a lot. It's a lot of messages you, you will start processing if you pay attention to it. But it's a kind of unique approach against the overvalued or undervalued market if you just uh, analyze the crowd sentiment, which in this case was represented by CNBC. And the funny thing is that since maybe three weeks, the pattern again change, changed, like in crypto everything is changing. There were a lot of uh, tweets and uh, messages in crypto communities saying, wow, CNBC became so cool and the was the only one I need for trading. And of course, CNBC notices it, now it's changed. So they don't say this works so intensively or so clearly anymore, we cannot use it anymore. For a few months it works very nice. Um, for the next few examples, I will switch off. To, I will switch on to, to our existing like, uh, platform and desktop, and uh, where we show a few more uh, interesting data sets. In one typical example of machine learning, will apply. See, which you could use for imagination or inspiration how to deal with relation with currency market, crypto or cryptocurrency market. There is one very simple metric which we believe should be transparent and publicly accessible for everyone in cryptocurrency market. It's a developer activity. Every cryptocurrency is a result of development. If there is no activity, well, it's a scam. 90% likely it's a scam. 
sometimes there is activities that are published yet, because we private record. But most of the project you will see from here, they're building and they're building a lot. It's a little bit challenge uh, to build a unique metric which uh, shows uh, uh, normalized number, which is 100 for one project and 50 for other projects, it means they are really building almost a double as much. But we had our approach and according to feedback, it seems to be working. So there is a number which says who among all the project built in more and more projects in less. And if you go inside the detailed page, you will see how they have been built in over the time. It's a part of transparency. We need a cryptocurrency space. And we offer it publicly, and even open it recently, like APIs you can include into any model, so whatever you're doing. So uh, publicly accessible APIs. It's a one metric. And because of the recent, recent uh, Violent movements on Ethereum uh, cryptocurrency. There is another metric of this visualization. This is a like, tons of data for those who like look into the data. How much any Ethereum based project is still hold in his team wallet of Ethereum? How much they spend in the last 30 days? How much they initially collected? This is a piece of information when you start doing more fundamental analysis and you relate to the behavior of the market, how they will likely behave when the market keeps pushing down. Or maybe some of the projects will not even survive if they still hold a lot and they have no cash. Yeah. Can we ask questions during this? <coughs> yeah, uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, you can ask. If I see that it fits more or better to the question answer sessions, I will put, but otherwise, yeah. Okay. Um, cool, thank you very much. So, so whenever you have stats, it's very, um, and, and people realize that you have stats, it's very easy to get them. So you can, you can automate and upload to GitHub um, to prove developer activity, right? Uh, and in this case, there's probably two reasons why you might be setting F. One is perhaps doing something which you might consider sensible, which is um, turning F into, into uh, the local currency of the country where your developers are, so you can match your pop, so you can have much better insight into your, your runway. And that would possibly be considered a good thing, perhaps, um, or a bad thing. Price is depressing, or whatever. The other option is you could just flick it into another wallet. If they're trying to get in the system, they could just flick it to another wallet there, uh, which make the F balance in this grid go down, um, and the S might go up, but they're still holding F, um, just in a, in a slightly different wallet. So it's very easy to gain some of these metrics. Very um, quick. If you t if you build, it's a good question. Once people are motivated, they can gain the lot. I mean, it, happens in, it happens in traditional finance. It happens all the time. So it's not a, a thing that's particular to crypto. Uh, but crypto has a habit of taking things to the extreme. So for the GitHub activity, we don't take simply like a number of commits, which is really like thousands of days. It's a complicated metric: number of commits, number of forks, uh, comments, uh, and I don't know what. In six or seven parameters which we're tracking. Up till now, I didn't see an example of uh, severely strange behavior of this matrix. But if someone really wants it, he could. For the Ethereum, There is one specific aspect so why we uh, track it. Well, there are two. One is for transparency. There's those projects uh, which we knew from our past uh, when we started ICO uh, last year. There have been some projects in the parallel who tried to be transparent and open to their community. We just saw that it's happening and because our professor project was to collect and structure the data, we said, hey guys, why don't we build a project transparency together? Uh, and the launch it and we collected the data and uh, this is how it grew then the set of data grew, grew, grew and we just know that uh, for most of the data we have there is a kind of communication to projects that don't, they don't 
they don't uh, try to work in. And this one part of the uh, answer. And the second part here, what we are interested when we do in analysis of the market, like we are doing behavior analysis. I didn't introduce this term in the presentation, but it's basically all about behavior analysis. We people behave more or less the same way in situations when we are depressed, or we're like panicking when we lose too much, and we are like excited when we earn a lot. Now, the project owners who has uh, under control a lot of ad collectors, they have huge responsibility to run the project for a few years. Now, when the price drops from 1,000 to 200, they suddenly assume their books, well, it's not 10 millions anymore, it's only 2 millions left, they will be forced by community of their feelings to start selling and pretending. And we did see this activity close to the last bottom. So we aggregate this data for this purpose, purpose too, just to track the behavior aspects of as many as possible different players of the cryptocurrency market. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it explains some explanation why we do it. And still, mm, I do agree with you that uh, the, to keep the data clean and uh, up to date, this is the most challenging. Luckily for communities, they do contact us from time to time and say, hey, this data is not correct, it's not correct. So we do have, I think, up to now the most clean data set. But yeah, there is no guarantee that in one week something happens, not anymore. Yeah. Sorry, I just want to follow up. Uh, when do you update the data? Uh, is it not updated live, I presume? It's not updated live. So if uh, it checks down very deep, either Binance, when are you going to? Well, our data is updated live. We have our own full nodes, full infrastructure, and pipelines. If it happens in the blockchain, we see it in, uh, immediately. You do, but are you going to upload it there? No. Uh, here, here we show with some, with some uh, post audit. We have, an, uh, we have uh, APIs where you can get live access to all metrics. Okay. But just because sometimes, you know, there, was a, there were a few examples where people realized what kind of data we have and they published it on Reddit and then suddenly we have 10 times more traffic to our web page and it's a kind of huge and we realized uh, to provide in, uh, live, live data would uh, mean for us a few thousand more people on Amazon Web Service so we do calculate these metrics which we show here like I think on daily basis and kind of cache them. but there are APIs where you can get all the live data just for this purpose. This is all publicly accessible metrics, which I uh, only show because from our perspective they should be public, should be visible and transparent to every participant in cryptocurrency space. It's important to see it whenever you analyze any project. You see how they developing, uh, how are they dealing with the Ethereum, do they publish this data too? It tells a lot about the project. metrics which is uh, used to be experimental now I kind of established into our pipelines and I believe they explain a lot too uh, about the behavior of uh, market participants or like network participants I will just show shortly and if you have questions we can pull it back to the uh, question answer section uh, for example so we took here but basic equation token big project based community Big ambitions to <laughs> And very nice project as Few more metrics. One is average token age consumed. And then Bitcoin, we you know, like uh, Bitcoin days destroyed, something like this. Basically means uh, whenever big amount of tokens or wallets which have been holding for a long time now start moving it, we will see here spikes. And they don't do it without the reasons. They have some, whatever the reasons are, they have some reasons to stop holding and it will be displayed on uh, on the chart 
by conviction samples, the beginning initial participants of uh, ICO, they always exit after they have three, five weeks, these initial whales, or pre-sale participants. Then you will see this kind of activity, after which you can say, okay, big cell brushes come, you can go, or like maybe close to bottom, you will see these spikes, it will be kind of capitulation of panic, and those who hold a long time, they cannot hold it anymore. This, it shows this kind of uh, behavior aspects. It's the amount of transaction, what transaction volumes happen for this token, how many tokens are tra uh, transacted, velocity, and how often they transacted, exchange flow, how, uh, if you, here there is a line, and if it's above, it means more tokens go into exchange, and then below line it means more tokens like accumulated. Remember here we show that for the for one year, so it looks a kind of hectic, but normally you analyze if a shorter time you will see a uh, much uh, more precise and interesting picture. And I think we'll, we'll look into one example into Ethereum, what happened to Ethereum for this token. So all these metrics they explain uh, on the visualized behavior of uh, network participants. Behave in a specific way, and whenever we interact with a blockchain, it is reflected. It is reflected in metrics, and we've seen it over um, know, dozens, or hundreds of projects or ICOs, Ethereum based tokens. And by no means, these metrics are simple. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's not supposed to be super simple at the stage where we are, but it's more like invitation. We should uh, learn it more together and build aggregators on all the data. Network growth, simple metric, like how many addresses are added uh, or what is added to these holdings to network, it still shows a lot, is this network uh, uh, still alive? Yeah, it's still alive. Well, it's not so excited really as it was in back in December, January, but it's normal, it's still alive. You will see many projects, uh, for instance, I was looking in Hong Kong, Gapcoin, I think, yeah. Because the founder of Gapcoin actually he escaped to Singapore. And it was clear that since some time it's like there is no network of nothing. Nothing happened. So you can clearly see the network is actually dead. And daily active addresses, nothing to compare how it was December. Yet it's actually hundreds. Let me see. Look at here. Well, most of it, a few hundreds. Daily. They interact every day with each other. Network is pretty much alive, just we haven't entered the next hype phase. And you can see another network, not so much activity yet. And for any time you, so you select, you can see in, in this interface uh, what are the biggest transactions, where they go, and sometimes you will see what is here exchange to exchange, or from one wallet to exchange, or someone bought an exchange and put to his wallet. We have marked with, uh, with uh, some machine learning, I believe 90% of exchanges addresses all over Ethereum. It's not 100 yet, but most of them. So this, this type of metric is on chain, as you remember, it's one, and uh, rapidly growing, and the realization of how it can be used also rapidly evolving. It can be used already right now, like effects for or data for all Ethereum based tokens. And the next step where I think would be very interesting to start aggregating it and see how maybe specific verticals are behaving. Do we see inflow of real users or not? By verticals, I mean gaming industry or advertising industry or whatever the verticals are. That will be, I think, the next step where we're entering crypto. And as I mentioned, here too, I think we had here very interesting. quite nicely the behavior because at the time I remember the toxin community. Everyone was actually 
really quite panicking and expecting that, oh no, and the way a lot of researchers and uh, publication buy Ethereum and can go grow, I fall down. So quite some amount of paper was moved, and at this time, a bit more, say 300,000 ETA on one day was moved to exchange. It's quite substantial amount. So I say, it's a kind of also strong signal for anyone who is looking maybe for position to enter long when you see this kind of panic in the panic you normally like to go long. That was on-chain analysis, then Let's look at this. It's already a bit more applied with machine learning. Yeah, because today we're talking about different data sources and uh, how data science can be applied to it. Here's aggregated metrics for the whole cryptocurrency. Uh, don't look here. Uh, there, was, <laughs> there was some, there seemed to be some uh, calculation or pipeline in, in our backend not functioning uh, since yesterday properly. Um, the metric is uh, like built on one assumption or one idea is an aggregate of the whole market and uh, shown one way. The assumption is or idea we, we know from the financial uh, normal background all price increases should be followed up with increasing volume. It's a healthy behavior of the market. And we keep seeing uh, the price is growing, the volume, volume is not falling up. So it's a kind of uh, signal we might be entering a problematic area. Now, whenever we notice it, for one specific project on one day, we generate one signal, and we analyze the top 200 for this metric. We take top 200 uh, per market uh, valuation, which represents 99% of cryptocurrency valuation. And we say if for any single project on one day we notice the price has been rising but volume didn't follow up, we generate one signal. Now as you will see here, the closer we get to the top, we start building spikes. It means a lot of projects generated or showing similar behavior. Like here, 47 project, 52 project, 51 project. They show all the same. The price is still kind of pushing up, volume cannot do it anymore. And then top is built up, we go down, and the system relaxes, doesn't generate signal for some time until the next top comes. So this was uh, in September what we experienced before the last drop. It's again the kind of behavior analytics based on uh, accessible data price and volume, but already some data science applied how you build this divergence between price and volume, how you aggregate all the data for the top 200 projects. And I hope we will see more in, uh, in the coming months and years so that the uh, view of the market for the participants will be much more clean and reduced from the typical token noise it's based on the data. And the market participants will be reacting faster. Maybe there's a last one. It's an interesting, simple, but interesting metric. measure because the data is publicly available uh, communication and social channels for for specific projects we take it for what they're talking in their own channels it's, uh, bottom then we see how much people are talking about this project in other channels which are not related to this project and outside us and then we also propagate data from trader forums which we Trader charts who are only trading, doing nothing else. Now, this data uh, shows also kind of uh, in aggregated between different uh, uh, projects. It starts showing you the level of interest to this project compared to other projects. Is it growing? Is it falling? 
And you will see similar behavior here too, but it was very clearly visible at the end of uh, 16, and beginning of 17. The price keep pushing, but the kind of uh, interest or volume of interactions start declining. You cannot, uh, as a human, get heated up all the time. You need some rest. The market needs rest, we need to rest, we need to also start building not only and get excited. All this data uh, does show you insight on, uh, on the behavior aspect of us humans, and it can be analyzed and measured in a specific project or across all the project to show uh, where we are in the cryptocurrency market. Now, I think because we introduced now on chain data, social, or some small part of social data, also kind of data science on uh, price volume data, and keep repeating about the here aspects. It's kind of nice wrap up for introductionally uh, talk. Maybe I will stop here. We will have a question and answer sessions where whatever you want to ask, we can discuss. But between the two parts, what? introduction and question answers. What we wanted to do is a small, funny quiz. Uh, I think Serena. Are you coming to the quiz? The quiz will be uh, five questions. Simple, funny one. Our one question will be practical questions. Yeah. And the zones, uh, the rules are simple. You need to answer correctly and fast. Those who will answer the, more, answer the most questions correctly the fastest way will get at the end one at you. And it's growing the radio. <laughs> yeah. So there will be one for a price for the top level. And you only need to be sure I know that it's the right answer and I will be one of the first ones. And because one of the questions will be, let's say, there will be a very practical one. I will show you uh, what it means. Because it's not completely shock for you. You think it's not fair. So there is a uh, also built by us very interesting uh, uh, feature. Like in, uh, as I say, we aggregate data across all social channels: Telegrams, Reddit. Here we don't show Twitter and Bitcoin talk. Here we can say Telegram and Reddit in professional traders chat. And there you can track how often a specific word keyword is used when they communicate. And you will be surprised how, how interesting correlations are, for instance, so simple stuff like how often is it using the word bottom, as they're looking for bottom or thinking the bottom is, and surprisingly, there is a strong correlation, you will see it. And just look at it. There is a kind of noise and there are some spikes, which is say there is some signal among the noise. And just how often they use the simple word bottom. You will see this question in our piece, that's why I'm showing you uh, so that you know what will be asked for. <coughs> bottom, bottom, bottom. Normally you look for the bottom before it comes. Right? Is it the bottom? Is it the bottom? Now finally it is the bottom and then they don't talk to me about the bottom anymore. And then it comes. <laughs> and Nicely visualized, and it shows your behavior of the traders in a very comprehensible way. And why is the price of why is the price of Bitcoin? Good. Uh, so, do you want to switch to? Space? Yeah. So, just as Maxim said, just to change up the pace a bit, we're going to jump into a little quiz, and then after that, it'll be followed by Q and A, and followed by that, we'll do some more networking. So, just quickly. And the prices are in first just a token amount, so it's one ETH for the first prize, and then we have uh, some runner prizes as well. And just for your knowledge as well, you get extra points if you're quite fast, so speed is taken into consideration. Okay, let's go. When did Santiment complete their ICO? Oh, gosh. <laughs> 2016, 2017, 2018, or finally upcoming? Okay for the people listening. 
Was raised in their ICO. Twenty thousand ETH, thirty thousand ETH, forty-five thousand ETH, or sixty thousand ETH. Twenty Was forty five thousand ETH. Seems coming first. All right. How many projects are listed on app.sentiment.net? One hundred projects, two hundred projects, five hundred, or more than nine hundred? Tough question. The answer is more than 900 projects. Let's see who is in the lead. is the final question. Oh, no, just kidding. What was Sentiment's hyped market cap? It's the highest. 50 million, 100 million, 400 million, or 900 million? The correct answer is 400 million. No. Okay. Yeah, this is final question, practical question. What you see, oh, what you don't see, what you saw right now. <laughs> yeah, what do you do? It's a the same chart we saw with the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> How many times some specific keyword was used or mentioned in communications on uh, Reddit or on Telegram channels? One specific word. Here, close to the bottom. And there's there is, there is one word which was uh, we are showing here, which was used uh, so interestingly. No, 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 no. We will show you also multiple choice. Yeah, just explain what you see, and now here comes the question or oh, like options. Couple of seconds. Yeah, it's the same. Ready? Yeah, I see the now start question. What keyword was used in this chart? Moon, Erect, Hodl, Beetle? That's a complicated question. We give a bit more time for this question, 40 seconds.
anything from that same tip? Hi, uh, I'm Redmond. Uh, is this working? Yes. Yeah. You mentioned somewhere in the middle that uh, you've managed to tag all the exchanges. Uh, you've tagged the hot wallets, is it? Or have you tagged like all the addresses which belong to exchanges? The second one? Um, all the addresses which belong to exchanges, uh, uh, but not to your um, address where you send your it. For instance, when uh, it's your address on exchange, hot and cold wallets. You do the hot and cold wallets. Yeah, yeah, because they behave in a specific pattern and can be recognized. Like amount of transactions, how much transactions are, how much uh, it usually holds uh, before being transferred. So we like, kind of apply some machine learning and uh, hot and cold wallet can be recognized. Yeah. So is that data uh, publicly available? No. no? Uh, at least not yet. I don't know if we will, uh, how soon we can publicly uh, share this data, but it's used in many metrics. Yeah. Did you work on this metric too? Or you try to? No, I'm interested in solving this. I have one approach to doing it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can you can join our Discord and uh, just talk to developers. At least you can discuss uh, from the developer point of view how you will solve this task. It can be done. The question uh, regarding using the your tools, mm -hmm. uh, do you discover the big connect is a scam, and mm -hmm. you manage to find out which other off coins turn out to be actually scam? The definition of scam is not so straightforward. How do you define scam? You mentioned that your tools is able to show commits to GitHub, right? So, yeah. besides, besides showing commits to GitHub, which in a way could be fabricated, but let's assume it's true, uh, I am sure you will be able to know which odds have turned out to be scam, mm -hmm. like Bitcoin, for example. When we analyze crypto, well, in general, I mean, we use this word scam recently too much. 50% of cases someone says a scam is not a scam. So the usage of word scam, I would use it now more carefully, especially when we are like a depressed market, it's very easy to accuse someone of scamming. What we can do, however, is the state of the, uh, this cryptocurrency network. This we can do. Based on on-chain metrics, is there any interactions? Is it like growing or like staying stable or decreasing? In terms of developer activities, are they doing anything? In terms of uh, social networks, are the audience are they communicating like more or less stable? Is the number of people participating in communication growing or falling? I would use these metrics if you want to say, is there a higher chance now price is undervalued or is a high chance price is fair or overvalued? Because practically speaking, scams or not scams, it's for us anyway, can we profit from it or not? BitConnect was known as a scam for a long time, yet people participated in it to the very end. And they, the, the trading volume was huge. And everyone knew it's scam. So the practical uh, knowing of uh, is it scam or not, it's a, maybe secondary for us as investors, we need to know, do we want to participate in this game? How risky it is? So, and for this, yeah, we have metrics. At least for all the Ethereum based projects. I would give you like this answer. Other questions? Is there any? Is there any currency you don't cover, and which is the currency that you most struggle with? Right now, we're most uh, struggling with EOS uh, on-chain data. It's very unstable, and the machine is crashing, I think, a few times a week. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, we do cover, but we are kind of struggling 
to extract meaningful metrics which can predict or can show some behavior uh, aspects. So I, mean, I would say this both we do have the data, but when I look into it, uh, how it behaves from point of uh, like pipelines or like metrics we get from this, I'm not satisfied. With Ethereum, as you see, I'm pretty satisfied what we have. This too, no, it's struggling. Now we want to move also to Neo, Dash, Zcash, and maybe Stellar, where I don't know yet if we will struggle a lot or a little bit. But every new uh, on-chain, every new blockchain we attach, it's always a struggle in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. so, and if, uh, well, if any of you is a developer or have the skills of, for, for data mining for any blockchain, we'll be more than happy and we actually even do sponsor or support uh, open source development in this area. And we have a gateway how you can feed the data, but we can keep whatever you develop as an open source library so anyone can do it. Yeah, accessibility to the data is a necessary step for, for crypto. I just mentioned it because there are a lot of struggles in the crypto space. Right? Yeah. Sorry, um, just check. Right? How do you guys compare yourself with CoinCheckup.com? How do we do? How do you compare yourself with CoinCheckup.com? CoinCheckup? Mm. So pretty much they provide the same metrics that you have in the entire system. Um, mm -hmm. It's a bit lesser, I might say, but they're providing all for free. But they're providing? Provide it for free, coincheckup.com. With the same analytical uh, metrics they're putting in, maybe not so much on the community portal side, but whatever is publicly available, which does make up a majority of your, your metrics. Mm. Well, I, I need to check them. I don't know about the coincheckup. Mm. I, I know on the uh, on chain ethics. Is this providing? If you would ask, maybe I would compare all. Like we have other friends who are doing to some degree similar stuff. Now, without looking in coin checkup, I would say our approach is uh, pretty unique. We're focusing on the behavior aspect of cryptocurrency participants, and whatever we build, it's built for the purpose of uh, giving you more and more insights of behavior analysis of the market in reducing or removing noise and giving you clear signals when something is happening. Yeah. Who, who is using this data now? Who who is using this data now and how are they using it? Funds are using it to build their models and their own specific kind of signals. Is this what I know? Uh, our community is using it uh, for getting information or sharing each other specific to some project when they want to know in depth what is happening on chain. And recently it's picking up interest for this kind of Google search for crypto for the keywords because we've been shocked how, how amazingly strong this indicator is if you know what you're looking for. So this refills, I know, what, what is being used right now. Now in public, uh, whenever Ethereum is falling, everyone is keep checking ad spend. And I think GitHub activity is used in some publications uh, over and over again because it's nice and simple metrics. It's like One final question, perhaps. Now we can move to networking. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Thank you very much. Very nice, very nice uh, session and questions.